Hi everyone, I am having a little stitch. Um, as you know, it's been a bit hectic here at my house and this is the most precious, precious thing I can be doing for myself. Um, I think today we all got a bit frazzled and tired and Nora's very sick and so now, now it is really the home stretch <laughs> with the moving. <laughs> couple more kitchen things and stuff to come and then during the week we'll do all the big furniture stuff into some storage. So this is my very important, special, precious time. I, I loved making my big rock pool, fluids inspired and um I've been thinking for a little while about making some smaller ones. So I've made one for Nora for her birthday. And then I thought, no, I'll just keep making them and they'll be uh, in my Etsy store for Christmas. And that's a good timing. So I just sort of thought I'd show a little bit. I don't know if you can see, I've been putting these long, long ones here with a little pearl on the top. Uh, I decided to have a little play with this, the silk castings, the offcuts from the cocoons of the silkworms that um, Steph Francis dyed. And uh, they're really beautiful to work with. I'm still, for most, for the most part, I'm using my Shishiko thread, but sometimes, actually, I decided I wanted to use a bit of colour for a bit because. Every part you get around, you think, oh, I've done a bit of that. What can I do here? What's the next step? And what what goes, what colour works in? So just allow me to indulge myself a little here. <laughs> Have a bit of a play. This orange is so good. I hope everyone's doing well. and being creative and when I say this is precious time it really is at the moment really very happy to happy to have this time I think I was a bit grumpy today I'd only had about three hours sleep and I was up and at them again so Let's just allow ourselves to have this time now for what we need for ourselves. That's the way I see it. I don't have a plan with these. They're very spontaneous. And I kind of use, I guess I use a little bit of thread to get things to stand up where they're a bit wibbly wobbly. So I'm just doing some French knots here. Nora was quite inspiring um, with what she wanted in terms of her colour palette. And so I've sort of kept a bit similar. I've said to her that I'll make quite a few and she can pick her favourite one for her birthday. I might have already said that on a video or that video might be after this one. I don't know at the moment. I've kind of, I'm just making videos and then I'm putting them in the, in the, in the tank, putting them in the, the way, the holding area. I think it's <laughs> calling it the holding area. And then I'm kind of trying not to end up with three of the same ones in a row, but trying to space them out. So they're even, so there's, you know, um, a different different one each day rather than three in a row of the same project. Unless I get on a roll with something that needs to be really finished quickly. But it works quite well with, um, you know, the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery fits in quite well with it. That you just have to do that once a week. 
Okay, I don't want to do too much of this because that's very similar over here. This is just a straight orange, whereas this here I use the uh, this beautiful the summer variegated fruit thread, and I love that. Um, I don't think I want to put a bit more of this in there. This piece is a bit more chunky than the last one. So I've cut a bit of this casting off and stitched it down and then put a row of these, these ones. So they match, matchy matchy. But these ones I was using the green because I hadn't actually used much green. There's a little bit of green when I use these beads and if I've used sequins, but I've only, I've actually used a different sort of sequin here. I, when I was doing my mermaid things, I ordered some of these because they look a bit like mermaid scales, but they're working out quite well here. At, <laughs> I had a laugh because I thought, oh, that looks like a back of a prawn or a shrimp. And I thought, I'm going to be hungry every time I see that. <laughs> this was off a beautiful bracelet, this um, abalone or... Um, some form of a polished shell it's beautiful and there's all sorts of different beads pearls beads and little fluffy bits and these luminous i, I don't know where, where these are from but this is the color nora was saying have you got anything fluorescent so she likes these i don't know if this she'll like this one However, uh, this is the other one that I kind of, I made this one with her in mind because she really loves that, this sort of a thing, because it looks like, because she, she's got her diving licence and so she went to the Great Barrier Reef and that's the sort of thing she loves. The rock pools and the very fluorescent colours under the water and I put a shell on there. But like I say, I'm going to make quite a few. She can choose her birthday present. And one thing I noticed when I started this, it was quite flat down. I've got the bullion knots in the variegated as well. Um, but the interesting thing about making these is you just get in your own creative space and your own creative role with it. And... You know, I did this area and then I did put this on and went, oh, that's so big and chunky next to this little area. But now as I've gone round, that's actually not as tall as this. So it's 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 really a beautiful little journey. I'm really quite enjoying it. So when I first started this I started here and I thought oh that's really flat I should add something chunky and I added this and then at the time at the start I thought oh this is so chunky it's like really over the top but then as I progressed and enjoyed myself and came up with new little ideas as I went around I just really thought now it's a, it's just a lovely feature So I used, did I bring it? I don't think I bought it out. No, I used, I cut one of the silk cocoons from Steph Francis in half because they're quite tall. And I didn't want it up this high because I'm still not sure if they're just going to be, well, I have a picture of them being rock pools, but keeping this background and putting it into frames, but the deeper frames, you know, with the, the deep frame, not not just a, sh a, a photo frame, but a, a actual picture frame. So I'm going, I looked today and I couldn't find any in Kmart. So I'll have to source some. I've got a huge shelf with lots of canvases on, but I don't think there's any of what I'm talking about up there. But I thought I'd just invite you along for a bit of the process with this. Because this is really, really 
doing me good at the moment. I think we can get one more in. Maybe a little baby one. Uh, so the I use a quite a sharp, this isn't a sharp needle, but I use quite a sharp needle for these because you've got to get it through and it's quite, it's relatively tough. Um, this one, I kind of just wrapped them around my fingers and then tied a loop around the bottom and then stitched it into the bottom. <laughs> I love it. I think that this is finished. Generally, I don't want to get too misshapen. I'm happy to have them as a sort of a circle. I don't think I'll put a shell on this one because it's got this. But I will stuff something under them as well. So that's two ready to start number three okay so this is the blue wool I was using inside the crochet um, the mohair bag as a lining I think I showed that one um, this was my original rock pool this had some memories through it of pit glass I've picked you know the really worn down glass I've picked up on beaches and it's a lot bigger so there's quite a few wraps and things like that, nets. Um, but this, this is a project where I move on from that and see how to make smaller versions. So let's start a new one. Maybe I'll make a really tiny one. It's good to use up your scraps. This is quite old, this blanket, so there are some very thin moth-eaten bits, so I will always try to avoid them for this particular project. I do have an idea for another one. Not quite yet, though. I want to just get a couple of these done. Well, I tell you what, when life is a little extreme, it really, really is a joy to just hang out here, just to hang out with everyone in your in your your, your tribe. Hang out with your tribe. That's that's how it feels. So I haven't been having a specific idea at the start of each one. I think when I was doing this first one, I was very much thinking about what Nora wanted and what she liked. And I always feel this is the one she'll probably end up choosing because it relates to her. This one... Um, She's actually allergic or doesn't like seafood or shellfish in particular. So she may, she's vegetarian or, yeah, vegetarian, not vegan, but vegetarian. She may not want this one because some vegans or vegetarians in particular don't like you using this the silkworm castings. So I'm not thinking she will choose that, but I can't predict anything. I cannot predict anything. Whatever she doesn't choose is what's going in the shop, basically. <laughs> Start with a needle and thread. I think 
for my big one, I used quite a lot of shells from my collection. The first one I used a shell. So I might, um, let me have a look. My bowls of shells everywhere. Now, a lot of these are very old memories. Just even 30 or 40 years old, some of these that I've picked up along the beach. Possibly even 45 years. So some of them are a bit too special. Look at this bit of sea sponge. It doesn't even smell, which is pretty good. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, I think ones like this, I wouldn't mind putting this in one, but I think it would have to be a big one. This beautiful cowrie from Phillip Island. So ones like that with a hole in. That's what I was talking about. That's what I was thinking and looking for. I don't know if I've got many with the little holes in, but look, there's one. How good's that? <laughs> a badge that Liss made. <laughs> Special. <laughs> oh. Right, that's got a little tiny weenie hole in it. Yes, a lot of these are too too big for this particular project, but that's okay. No, no hole. Oh, look at that. That's definitely for a big one. Just beautiful. Although, oh, that's just gorgeous. Oh, we should do a Venus de Milo one. All right, I'll probably sit here and look through these shells for ages, so I better put them aside. And look at these ones. How precious. Look at that. So, so delicate. Oh, that has to go on one. That's just so special. Um... I love these little tiny weenie ones. There's a beach that we would go to, no hole, um, where you would put your hand in the water and get scoop the sand out, and there would be the tiniest, tiniest little weenies, much smaller than this, such minute, tiny little baby shells. And I, as a kid, would just sit there for ages picking them out and looking at them. So I have been collecting shells since I was, you know, like eight, nine, ten on family outings to the beach. And there's another one with a hole. That might be interesting. All right, I better, I better put them away. <laughs> and look at that. That's worn down so much. It's just this bit of the outer rim of the shell. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, and little special rocks. Oh, here's a bit more. No, I don't like that. Well, I do. I like it, but not for, not for what I'm doing. Look at the colour. Oh, this is making me so happy. <laughs> so happy I could cry after all the stress it's been this week. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Put it aside. Take that, oh, that doesn't need to be there. Okay, I've got a few things. So let's just start with the shell. Can work out. And build up from there. Now see, now that it's standing up, it's a little bit mushroom-like. So if I can get things around it to help it stand up, to support it, it'll give a lovely effect.
So that's my aim now is to get a couple of bigger things that will support this to stay where I want it to be. So that can take a little bit of time. It's not an immediate thing. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll have a slightly more greeny one this time. So I might do try a bit of the lighter green. Now, this one. Got tiny weeny little pearls in here. But they actually have a decent size hole, which is great. Um, some of the little, you know, the really little tiny weeny ones. We used to call them love beads. They would just not fit on the needle a lot of the time. The hole was just so small. All right, so now I'm going, oh, okay, that's... This is very unplanned, it's very spontaneous, and it's very joyful and playful. And now I'm just thinking, well, it's started off as a green one. As compared to the other two thinking about, you know, very vibrant underwater world. This might be a little bit more sedate. I don't want to predict it because you know when when I when I started this one and it was low and to the ground and I saw that and just threw it on and shocked to myself because <laughs> I thought, oh, did I that is, do I have to take that off if I made a big mistake? But then I worked around it and I worked around here and I put that on and all it all worked. It came into play and it worked. So I, I have no idea with this one. I can't even say, oh, yes, I'm going to make this an all green one because somewhere in the middle I'll probably shock myself and put on something bright. <laughs> and that's OK. That's that's what the fun of it is. Now, I'm just going to do a little extra stitch or two just to really secure those ones down so I don't get them caught. Or if, the, if this thread breaks, they don't come all loose. And I think I need something on this side prop it up a bit. So let's see how a bit of white looks on these. These were um, these were Kmart little dishes when I was doing my mermaid thing. I managed to grab a couple of them and they were in really good undersea mermaidy kind of colours. worked really well. Um, okay. Don't mind the white. It's going to help to ease off a bit from all green. No, I certainly don't want to do all green. Feel like I'm just listening to the muse because the muse just said look at that yellow there <laughs> okay I saw it <laughs> for the most part at the moment I'm thinking I'm I'm focusing on just making sure I can get that shell supported to be upright right, now I don't always start from the middle and work out this one I started here on the side with the bullion knots and then worked out and round. 
this one I started with this circle that I'd already made and then filled the center and then filled around the outside. So this kind of went not perfectly in the center, but off to the side a bit. So there's no plan, no plan about it. It's just relaxing and enjoying it. Oh, that yellow, it's just like sitting there staring at me. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> Crazy artist brain. I'm going to secure this a bit before casting off just to make sure those beads are very secure there. Oh, I can't tell you what a relief it is to just be sitting there having a stitch. It's quite stressful. I didn't realise... I, I, it's been um, oh, three years, no, yes, three years since Lily's been at home. And of course, there's going to be a period of adjustment, I think, with, uh, you know, she's been out in shared houses and so she's really grown up. So there's definitely a very happy vibe. You know, because mums always want want to have fun with their daughters. Okay, now that's sort of coming under those little. These are going under here. So these are the little problems that come up as we're as we're working. Little things happen that you know allow us to add a new thought, try a new thing. And that's the creative flow. I love it. I know this yellow just was speaking to me, but I don't know what it wanted me to do. So I'm just going to start with a French knot right in there. Because I think those sequins might need a bit of... Oh, well, that's a... I'm leaving that. That's a happy accident. That's my, oh my goodness, what a terrible French knot. Oh, happy accident. Oh no. No, it, <laughs> I should have just left it. <laughs> but I wanted the end <laughs> to come out. <laughs> oh well. But that was good, wasn't it? Maybe that's how, I probably won't be able to recreate that. But I do actually like to have my end out so as I can make it last a bit longer the thread I totally should have left that <laughs> oh, oh, the fun we have oh, that's helping those sequins didn't do the job of holding that upright as well so I think the beads didn't either. So there's going to have to be quite a bit of uh, tight work around here, keeping, you know, to keep that upright. So when I'm doing about five wraps, it's creating a reasonably big French knot. But it's really, um, it's quite effective, that yellow with the sequins and the white and the shell. It's very bright. Maybe Nora will like this one the best. Who knows?
All right, that one's really stuck. So I am going to allow that to be. No, don't like it. No, no. It's because the end's got a bit ratty tatty there. Oh, no, it's really stuck. There we are. That's what you do when it was the first happy accident was the best one. Now I'm just filling in. Little gaps. All right, so here we are. Very much enjoy the moment. There we go. And work from there. Is this one going to go on? I wonder if this is... It's actually, I was thinking, it looks so fragile. Maybe I can put a pin through it, but it's actually, it's really hard. But, oh, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's so nice. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep working on this. I just wanted to show a bit of my process and just hang out with you guys for a bit and see what we can make. And that was just, oh, thank you. That, I needed that. That was so enjoyable. <laughs> um, I hope there was some inspiration in that for you. And I will speak to you soon. And thanks for being here. Bye for now.